All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Sunday, November 8th. Fassel and I are here to do a breakdown of the U.S. stock market, gold, commodities, the dollar, all things related to what's happening in the elections, the president-elect uh, Biden, Joe Biden, and the impact of his presidency on the markets. And we'll talk a little bit about Bitcoin today as well, because there's a lot of great things happening on that front too. So uh, welcome, Fassel. What's going on? What's up, man? Good to be here. How are you doing? Not too bad. Just um, just looking at the markets, man. You know, it seems like uh, we had a pretty strong week last week. You know, <laughs> what did you think about that? Man, it was one of the strongest weeks. I think I, I read a headline that it was um, the strongest week since since one of those weeks in April when the market was just starting to recover from its lows. So um, it definitely caught everyone out of the blue. I think even the people who were expecting, because I think f first first of all, this move was primarily driven as as most people know by the election, and I think even those who were expecting a, a gridlock government didn't expect this much upside volatility, um, especially considering there's still two special elections left in January that I think. Um, I think it's it's more likely to to stay Republican, but there is definitely a chance that it could go blue. And and if those two seats go blue, then uh, that becomes a blue wave, and and this entire market I think has to shift its its outlook for for various industries. But whatever the case, it was just a strong week. You had leaders, a lot of leaders break out. You had just a a really powerful buying across the board. I mean, I think only energy was the weakest sector, and that closed up maybe less than one percent. But that's dealing with a bunch of issues like COVID and other things. But for the most part, tech was up 10%, I think, industrial 7%, healthcare up 8%. And considering what I just said with the special elections, that industry or that sector could still be at risk for major changes in, in terms of the HMO structure or even um, drug pricing, which I think will probably happen no matter what. But if there's a blue house and, and Senate, I think that'll come a lot faster. So really crazy week. I'm excited to see what happens next. I'm I'm really not going to make any calls as of now but um definitely more data needs to play out for for the clarity because it just seems like stocks are either overheated or they could break out from here yeah well let's uh let's dig into the um healthcare sector a little bit because i want to give our viewers some some actionable items uh stocks that they can research so what's at the top of your list of um you know those stocks that you're watching in a potential Biden presidency that you think would benefit? Well, for first of all, like the healthcare sector in general, I think is going to be one of the most volatile sectors. And that's going to have like, I would not be a buyer of XLV because I, that has a lot of pharmaceutical exposure and HMO uh, health healthcare plan exposure um, within that that portfolio. So if there is that blue wave that comes in in uh, in January, those sectors are going to be <laughs> very negatively affected and XLV will probably go down. Now that doesn't mean you can't invest in healthcare in general. Cause I think with COVID still going on, you have like a stock at the top of my list is QDEL, Quidel. They make a lot of these um, uh, disease testing devices. And, and I think they've gained a lot of traction ever since COVID started popping up and, and they've really shifted their, their, their vision to, maybe possibly coming out with these devices that every American can have and check for when they feel sick to 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 successfully diagnose them for any type of disease. So Quiedel, I think they're growing earnings triple digits this year and next year with sales also growing triple digits. I mean, this stock is a beast in terms of earnings estimates. So you all should definitely check that out. Um, Hulks is also another good one. H-O-L-X. Um, what what else? Abbott is, is the household name that everyone knows, the five minute uh, fast testing um, devices. So those medical device companies that are strictly in the testing area, I think they're going to see maybe even more funding from this Biden administration as as testing gets ramped up again to an, finally a normal level where it should be. But um, yeah, I think I think that's a good sector to be in. And and uh, that's probably the main one that I'm looking at in the healthcare sector, because for the most part, I, I kind of want to stay away. OK, so um Let's talk about earnings a little bit because we spoke about earnings prior to this call and you said that earnings this past week have been, or, well, the past two weeks, whenever we've had earnings, uh, they've been tremendously good, right? Um, first of all, can you tell us about some of the uh, stocks that you're watching in terms of earnings? Um, and then why exactly do you feel that the earnings uh, are good and they could potentially you know, boost stocks more? Yeah, the earnings 
Like for those who don't know, I know the reactions have been very mixed. And I talked about this at the start of the earnings season that even though the bar was set very high and these stocks are beating um, their high expectations, they have to be at an astronomical level in order to go up because it just seems like that's that's the mood in the market. Even if you beat, there's still a risk you could go down. And uh, Tesla was one of those companies that beat and still went down. Um, there were a couple of others. I think Lamb put out one of the like a, a really amazing report and still sold off. ASML also did. Um, there have been a couple of others uh, as the week's gone on, but those were the ones in the beginning that I paid attention to. Um, for the most part, I think earnings have been like just statistically, they've beat 80 more than 80 percent of the time, which is higher than any of the past quarters in the last four years, at least just to my knowledge. So it's been a really, really great time in terms of earnings beats. But, uh, you know, when I've looked at the earnings themselves, they've really beat by a nice margin as well. It's not even like a slim beat. You know, these these are really nice levels to beat at. And so overall, I I'm someone who believes that as long as the earnings continue to grow and the estimates continue to rise and and beat expectations, then the market should follow and continue to to go higher. So tell us a little bit more about the earnings that you're looking forward to for the couple of weeks ahead. And uh, additionally, where are where do you think that um, the the earnings are doing really well in, in specific sectors, if you will, and why do you think that is? Oh, for the first first and foremost, technology has been just outstanding, and I think. Um, can you give us a, Can you give us a couple of tickers so we can look at um, which uh, which tech stocks? had great earnings um, and the ones you're kind of focusing on? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at LAM because I just mentioned that before. I thought LAM at the beginning of this LRCX. What's the ticker? LRCX. Uh, LRCX. Yeah. I thought LAM at the beginning of this season had a phenomenal quarter. And as you can see, uh, it actually sold off on its earnings. And I was so surprised. Uh, as you can see, that before it popped off like crazy, this sell-off was actually induced by the, by the earnings. And so... It was really weird to me. I was just like, you know, at some point the stock is going to bottom out. And when, when the buyers do come in, they're going to buy in heavily. And just as you saw this week, they they took this stock up far and beyond. It was one of the few um, one of the few key leaders to to make an all-time high. Even stocks like NVIDIA and ASML didn't, didn't make an all-time high, but LAM did. Uh, so these stocks, semiconductors, software companies, even companies like Zoom, that had high expectations. They also performed really well. I, th I think the reaction was a bit muddled, but uh, once again, they're still beating expectations. And and even though now may not be the time to to necessarily buy them, like you, you may not buy them tomorrow, their outlook still looks very positive. So going forward, there's not any tech stocks on my list that I'm I'm looking towards because I think the majority of them have have already posted numbers. But uh, you know, earnings is kind of like a week by week basis. On Monday or Tuesday, I'll kind of check to see what's what's available or what's what's already reported or what's set to report. Um, so maybe I'll give a little bit more information about that throughout the week. But as of now, I, I kind of don't have anything on my radar for what I'm watching. Gotcha. Um, and, and I'm glad you've been posting a lot of uh, information in the stock alert side and the uh, live equities update. So for those of you who are watching right now, again, this is our Advantage community. Our community resides on Discord. So this is our private channel. Um, uh, all these lock channels that you see are for Advantage members. And you can go to our website right now and you can hit the products page. And for 97 a month, you can buy the Advantage membership and get access to all these lock channels. And you can read Basil's updates, the trade that uh, the trades that he's taking, trimming, um, buying, closing, et cetera, all in these channels. And additionally, we have a special going on where if you buy this technical analysis course that I made, okay, um, for the next 24 hours, I think it only costs uh, $12.99, if I'm not mistaken. So if you buy this course for $12.99, we will give you access for seven free days in the Advantage community. Uh, I think it's a solid deal. In seven days, you will get to witness all the things of how we trade and analyze uh, the crypto markets, whether it's DeFi, altcoins, Bitcoin, and then, of course, you will get um, access to Fassel's amazing uh, trading insights. So make sure you guys um, pick up this course and get get access to our Advantage membership. But let's uh, let's move forward, right, Fassel? Um, so aside from earnings, you know, kind of looking good, okay. 
you know, I've, I've been hearing a lot of chatter about cannabis stocks, you know, um, ACB, uh, mm -hmm. Canopy, all, all these different stocks that are uh, coming up or rather, you know, seeming, seemingly oh, are breaking out. What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, wow. I didn't even, I, you know, personally, I, I really don't watch marijuana stocks so much. I, I tend to think that now is still too early to invest in it, but you know, moves like this, I and guess I can see why, why can, it happened. Can you, ex can you explain why it's too early um, to invest in them? Regulation. I think there's a lot of, um, there's definitely a lot of problems in terms of regulation and where things are at, even with the legal growers, uh, the, this, just how everything is set up. And even when it's federalized, it still has to go through a process of regulation. I think there are stages in which you can buy it at. Like, I think I, I see how it jumped up when Biden won because it's, it's presumed that he's going to hopefully lead to some federal legalization. But I think once again, it's a little bit too soon until he actually comes out and says that he's doing it. Then I think you can, you can start to see these stocks come up because they've sold off quite a ton from their lows. But once again, I think everyone understands just how how popular this product can be when it's widely distributed. But there's just this huge regulation overhang, which I think causes a lot of people to be scared. So you may not have institutional ownership, people who provide those safe floors um, in these names for a long time. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair point. A lot of people kind of look to get into trades like this early. And, and I totally agree with you. I do think that it might be a little too early to, first of all, uh, assume that Biden is going to um, you know, be more open or quick to the, the trigger pull on cannabis stocks or marijuana companies uh, getting the green light from the federal government. Um, however, you know, I would say the way history has been kind of shaping up for the, the cannabis industry, it seems like there is a bit of um, you know, momentum that this industry is developing. Now, I don't really know uh, which stocks are going to take off, whether it's ACB or Canopy or uh, Tilray, all these different stocks, but um, traders can, can probably start looking for ETFs um, in the uh, marijuana space. Uh, are there specific e ETFs that you are aware of, Basil? ETFs for marijuana? No, I, I'm totally unaware of that. Okay. Um, I remember uh, someone had told me Maybe it's like THCX or something, something like that. Let me see here. Let me just sort of look that up. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> what a ticker. Um, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess so. Leave it to the leave it to the potheads to create the most. Oh you know, man, amazing that's ticker. funny. <laughs> um, so apparently, I mean, I guess this is a uh, cannabis ETF. There's another one. Um, I think it's called MJJ. Uh, Microsectors Cannabis uh, ETN. So that's another one. Holy oh, crap, this one took off. Yeah, damn, that's um, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I, so I, I will say for marijuana, like I may not keep up with it at all. I think it, the only the only two ways I, I kind of know how to play marijuana is through Constellation Brands, which I really like the CEO and I think he's a he's a smart guy. He bought twenty percent of Canopy Canopy Growth around I think like three years ago. STZ, um, I think around three years ago or so. And, you know, I, if I like Constellation Brands, I like the CEO. I think it's when he talked about it, it seemed like a very good idea about incorporating THC into beverages and, and different things like that. So that's one way that I, I look to play it. And then IIPR, I was telling Amo about this a couple of days ago. This is just a phenomenal company. They reported this week, IIPR. I, IIPR. They reported this week, blew away numbers. This stock went from, uh, I think, like 114 to now close to 150 or something like that. And it just, it is such an interesting play. And I've talked about it in my previous videos before. They they pretty much pick out the, they're, they're a REIT, but they pick out the land for state governments to plant marijuana in. Because as, as most know, marijuana is a state by state basis. It's run by the state. So they pretty much go to IIPR and and say, hey, where is a good plot of land to to uh, grow it on? I think I, I really don't know exactly how it goes about, but either IIPR owns the land and they lease it to them, or they kind of do the land solution to figure out, okay, this place is the best place to go. Either way, the growth looks phenomenal, and this is just one that I've definitely kept an eye out on. I haven't bought into it at all, but definitely one of the best growing marijuana names that that I've seen. Yeah, you could go and check out the estimates; they are awesome. 
uh, detailed estimates on the left side. Yeah, up, 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 right above compared. Yeah. And then go down, down, down. All right, yeah, stop. So for the current year in 2020, they're growing 135% in uh, revenue and then 42% growth in revenue for next year. And even though that's kind of a big drop off, it's still above 25%, which is what I look for for any type of growth stock. And once again, this is a REIT, um, but earnings growing 52% this year and then 48.49% next year. So the growth is real, the growth is there. And, and once again, I think this is one name to keep an eye out on if you're a marijuana fan. Solid. So, um, you know, in the middle of this video, I kind of want to do a quick, um, quick sort of sentiment check on when, where you and I are uh, in regards to the market. So I think over the past several weeks, I think both you and I kind of agree that it doesn't really matter who the president is, whether it's Biden or Trump. Of course, there might be some, some, you know, positives for different sectors, if you will. But overall, I think both, both of us are kind of thinking that no matter who the president is, it seems like the Fed is probably going to keep printing. Um, you know, interest rates are probably going to stay relatively low. Uh, bonds are really not catching the bid, as you know, you very well know. The ten-year yield still kind of in a large developed range, uh, and so money in general is kind of seeking a place to go to. And unfortunately, because we've created this environment where bonds are not really yielding, um, you know, that much. It seems like investors across the board, even globally, are kind of forced to go a little bit further out on the risk curve and start looking into U.S. stocks. So, would you kind of agree that generally you're kind of still, you know, bullish going into the year of 2021, even if we have you know 10, 20, 30 percent pullbacks? Um, are you effectively going to be a buyer, or do you think that we're kind of near a toppiness of the market? Oh, no, I'm definitely going to be a buyer. <laughs> Fred, definitely, oh, if there's like a 10% pullback, I pray that there's a 10% pullback soon, okay? 20%, I'll be so happy. 30%, I'll just take off my clothes and run around the street. Like, that'll be amazing. I think the outlook for the next, um, at least for the next year to two years is really nice because once again, rates are low. You got a Fed that's going to be so accommodative. And even though stimulus, like you may get some near-term volatility that's associated with, with lowering stimulus or the fact that stimulus is not coming out too fast. The Fed has said we are ready to, to, to be the floor in any case, even if stimulus stalls out. And so yeah. once again, it's just like, you, you have to be a buyer. And just as you said, there's not many other options. And once again, I think this, this may point out to, um, you know, safe yields like dividend players may start getting a little bit more traction. Like I think PEP Pepsi is is a consumer staple company that is probably benefiting from a lower dollar, uh, has a really nice dividend yield and and a really staple stock. I think you're going to see money move into these guys as it has. They've, they've been pretty well for the year, but, you know, hasn't made an all time high. But I think it definitely should, especially since revenue is accelerating and, and you're having earnings growth of, of 10 plus percent for next year. So. That's one that I'm keeping an eye on that I think a lot of these more safer investors that usually go into bonds and everything like that will will go into these safer type of stocks like Pepsi. Mm. So let's let's talk aside from uh, stocks, right? I mean, uh, let's expand upon you know our general outlook of the market because I want our viewers to kind of take away, first of all, why do we look at the market from the viewpoint that we do regarding the Fed, interest rates, uh, stimulus, et cetera? And then how do we go about, you know, creating action? So uh, first thing that I'll say is, you know, as someone who kind of has been doing his best to look at the macro picture and trying to understand where the hell this world is heading towards, it seems like we've really gone into the full on, you know, um, print money mode, right? And there's two things associated with that. Number one, the Fed, as you stated, having a put on the market and creating a floor for maybe assets across the board, risk assets, uh, you know, and essentially the U.S. economy, right? They can print money, um, you know, until the cows come home, right? Aside from knowing that risk assets like U.S. stocks are going to do well, gold itself is going to be, in my opinion, increasingly a, a strong pick because 
whether stimulus is printed or not, you know, gold tends to do generally well, even if, you know, there's the economic times are tough. But now that you have a debasement of currency, in that regard, you know that people are looking for gold as a potential a store, store of value, if you will. In the same context, we're also looking at things like Bitcoin to, you know, you, um, uh, to, to provide us that same utility, which is if we are going to deal with inflation, if we are going to work towards you know, the debasement of currency, well, we want things like Bitcoin and things like gold in our position, uh, in our possession and or part of our portfolio. So it seems like across the board, I am not seeing any issues, whether it's your you're owning gold or you're owning stocks or you're owning Bitcoin. You know, and so for the most part, you are right. If I'm looking for a pullback in the market, why would I be thinking anything other than, holy crap, this is probably another solid buying opportunity to go long? Are you kind of on the same page as I am then? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I think you nailed it. So I think for the most part, you know, our viewers should kind of take away, again, not investment advice, do your own research, but Bitcoin at least and, and crypto at large, um, they're going to be a higher beta play than stocks, right? And, and generally, I mean, Bitcoin has moved up already quite significantly. So even if it starts ranging for a little while, or if you get a pullback in Bitcoin due to, say, the stock market selling off, Again, Bitcoin and crypto to me are the go-to assets that I would want to be buying into. Now, same thing with gold. If you are concerned about you know shit kind of falling apart or world um, you know increasingly struggling a little bit more, you should have gold as part of your portfolio. Um, you know, please do talk to your financial advisor. But these are the things that I'm looking at the world from the lens of what exactly is stopping these assets from going up further, especially if the U.S. is you know, full on, you know, risk on mode with just being ready to print, being ready to uh, support risk assets. Um, now, near term, right, of course, what this is going to cause is, you know, dollar volatility, especially volatility to the downside. Now, Fassel and I have been talking about the dollar for months on end. And, you know, we start talking about dollar uh, effectively, you know, potentially coming down from here all the way down to this level right here, which we've tried to hammer this long-term trend line. Let me show you guys exactly where this trend line is coming from. So this is a multi-year trend line, almost a decade long trend line. And I think if you throw it on linear chart right there, you can see the importance of this trend line going back to 2011. So we've continuously hammered this trend line and finally we're, we're breaching it now. So what that tells me is, you know, we might have some levels to look forward to below whether it's uh, the 91 um, flat level or 88 or 89. Again, more printing equals, you know, the dollar weakening equals stocks, gold, Bitcoin going up. I think the formula has been pretty simple. And if you've been playing it that way, right, you've been making some good money in the market. So make sure you guys, you know, do your research, um, hit the thumbs up, join the advantage community if you're not aware of, you know, how the macro picture is shaping up. Um, any other things that you want to talk about, Fassel? Um, maybe just for this week. I think there's still a lot of disparity between what's going to continue to go up and go down. Um, I put out a video yesterday uh, talking about the leadership and and the multiple leadership within different sectors of the market, whether it was uh, the industrials or or tech, because I think this market's going to get very segmented going forward uh, as it continues to see what this election holds and and deal with the various risks that still go that are still ongoing um so i like i just feel like it's a wait and see i probably won't be buying anything or or doing much probably till wednesday i think we're, you're going to probably see a good amount of volatility this week um especially after such a monstrous week like last week so yeah keep an eye on those leaders that's all i can pretty much say awesome well, perfect. I think uh, this was a this is a good informative video for our viewers. Again, make sure y'all hit the thumbs up. Um, go buy this course on our website, thealphatrades.com. Okay, and for twelve ninety nine, as you can see, um, if you click the buy button, all right, you will get seven days free access to all our channels, all the locked channels that you see right here. So make sure y'all join. And until then, we'll catch you next week. Take care. 
and uh, let's make some money. Peace. Peace.